They take a lot of shots. The opening tip goes into the hands of the point guard for the Mountaineers, J.D. Collins. A senior from Houston, Texas. He is banged up, though. He's playing with foot and wrist problems, but he just refuses to come out of the lineup. They go low along the baseline. Gansey has it knocked out of bounds with 23 on the shot clock. We're 15 seconds into this one. And one of the things for the young kids from Marquette, they're going to have to be able to read what West Virginia runs very quickly. This is a veteran West Virginia team, as you mentioned. First three for Gansey on target. He came right off the screen on that. And again, Marquette was a little bit late getting to him. James with some penetration and kicks it on the wing. Quick double team there on Novak, who had 41 points in his opening game in the conference. And Lott, Jameel Lott, lays one home. Big youngster underneath, junior college transfer. But John, that's one of the things James does very well is getting into the lane. Young for three, rims out. Rebound handled by McNeil, gives it up to James. Back come the Golden Eagles. Bear Bear on Novak. No place to go. 20 on the shot clock. Capacity 14,000, and it is full. Now the shot clock at 10 as McNeil gets off a jumper. Scramble for the rebound. Ganji comes out of there with it. Gets it to Collins. On the run down the middle, he comes, puts it up, and it goes. What a great drive. Tremendous push that time on the break. He took it down to get the numbers. And there's a great drive right back at you by Dominic James, the freshman from Richmond, Indiana. And that's one of the things that James has brought to this Marquette team. He really does a great job of penetrating and freeing up other people, but he's also strong enough to finish. Pitch noggle outside, and he's being covered out there. By Jamil Lott. Now Young has it. They go inside. Hair Bear. He lost the ball. It's saved by Young. Shot clock inside 10. So Gansy shoots a three, and it goes. How about that? They're really going to have to recognize and push up on him and make him put the ball on the floor. The West Virginia's in a 1-3-1 one, one right now. They seem like they're jumping into it after every make. And they run that 1-3-1 one, one very well. McNeil gets it underneath, and it'll go the other way. Mountaineers three out of four to start the ball game, and two of those are three-pointers. And one of the things, John, with, with West Virginia, they're a veteran team. They're able to change defenses and do a lot of different things on the run because they've been playing the system, some of them now, for four years. Hair Bear looks inside to Young. Pitznagel, his first three is on the way, and rims out. James the rebound. Fitzgerald back to James. They go inside. Working his way nicely along the baseline is Jameel Lott. He gets his second field goal. He's been playing pretty well for him, and they're going to have him guard Pitsnoggle defensively. And that is the matchup right at the foul line. Here comes Hair Bear with some penetration. Had a tapped away momentarily, maintains control. Collins now resets with 20 on the shot clock. Another three for Mike Gansey, and he's on target so far this afternoon. Three in a row for the senior from Olmstead Falls. He's really taking advantage of the matchup. They're, they're not getting through the screens fast enough to get out there to close on it. James penetrates. Loose ball picked up by J.D. Collins. He comes out of the scramble with it. And then threw it away. Here's James. He's all alone. And that's one thing West Virginia does not do very often, Perry. They don't turn it over. No, they don't. And Collins was very upset at himself for that turnover. I mentioned playing with a bothered foot and a wrist. His right wrist is bothering him and his left foot. But he's played through it. Marquette has jumped into a 2-3 zone. Thomas had enough of Gansey being open. Gansey's going to launch another one. That's four in a row. A dozen for Gansey. Even out of the zone, they, they, they did do a good job of locating. 
Uh, you look at this 1-3-1 and you say, well, why don't you just take it inside because Collins is at the back end of the 1-3-1, but it's easier said than done, isn't it? It really is what they do because the wings come up so high when it, they extend you and make your passing lanes longer than what they normally are. Now, McNeil down the lane, misses the short shot, and then goes back up and puts it in. Jarrell McNeil, the freshman from Chicago. Marquette, Marquette has gone back man-to-man -man right now. Well, it's been all inside for Marquette, and basically all outside so far for West Virginia. You can tell that Gansey's feeling it. Now there's the Collins with a three, and he hits that one. Collins with five early points. He is a 36% shooter. And three of 19 three-pointers in the first half on Wednesday. They've already hit five out of seven this afternoon, and thus they're up by seven and controlling the basketball. One of the things Coach Beeline talked about yesterday was having some days off. Collins short with a three off the hair bear feed, and James races back the other way. Novak's first three of the afternoon comes up a little short, tipped into the corner, controlled by McNeil. He'll take it back down the lane, work his way off the glass, and good. Nice move. John, he told his team that, the, that this was going to be the longest time off that they were going to have for a while, and he didn't really work them hard right after the Georgetown game, and they went light yesterday, and obviously they have their legs today. Here comes Gansey, gives it up to Young. Baseline jumper rimming off. Rebound snatched by Novak. Gets it ahead to James. This is McNeil with penetration and a steal by Pitsnagel. Third turnover by the Golden Eagles. That, that was just a freshman mistake there. He didn't put enough on that pass. There's a three-pointer from Hairbear, and he's a guy who's only shooting 22% three-pointers and has really kind of lost some confidence in that shot. Well, they talked. You know, we were in shoot-around yesterday, and we talked about that, but he stayed after and did some extra shooting, and Hairbear's the type of guy, whether or not he's making his shots or not, you need him on the floor. McNeil spins down the lane and has and draws a foul. Pointers made at West Virginia, one out of two for Jarrell McNeil. Five points for the freshman. The now, lead this, is seven. This is the difference with West Virginia team. Uh, last year they had, uh, they were a little bit bigger. Now they got Hair Bear actually playing the power forward spot, and they're playing with three guards. So this is a little different look than what they had last year. Well, the first game I did is Pitsnagel will shoot and miss a three, and a rebound brought out of there. By McNeil to James, stop and go move. Runner in the lane is good. Boy, they're quick. I tell you, James is really going to be a special player. I mean, I, I like his attitude. He's shown leadership uh, and shoot around the day, and he can get into the lane, and he really looks to set up his teammates. And James is three for three, and all alone underneath the basket. That's what they can do to you. They love you and get inside. Because what the fans have to understand is their offense is predicated off of read. There are no set cuts. They just read the defense. And that's why for this young Marquette team, they're really going to have to be on their toes defensively. Amoroso with a drive and an offensive foul. That is the first foul. And him and he recognizes. And this West Virginia team, they really read each other very, very well. Darius Nichols takes over at the point right now. For Gansey, off the feet from Hairbear. 14 first half points for Gansey. They just keep moving. He's five for five. Here's McNeil again down the lane. Missed the shot. The rebound by Gansey. Marquette may think about going to some zone right now because right now West Virginia's offense is really cooking. Beeline passes on the three. Gansey won't. And he hits another one. That's five for him in the first half. And that's going to bring a timeout. What else can you do? Well, uh, West Virginia right now, I think right now, they're going to maybe have to change some defenses to do something to slow West Virginia down. Well, they're shooting 70% and they're behind by 12 points. Now, how does that work? <laughs> Threes always beat twos. Novak for three. Got it. That's his first. He's a 46% three-point shooter. Mike Gansey shoots at 49%, and he's probably at 50% after the 5-for-5 five five start he's had. He's got another one launched. Miss for the first time, and Novak the rebound. You're hot, you got to keep shooting. Huh? You have, you have <laughs> to keep going to him. McNeil off the Novak screen. And go back inside. Fitzgerald will shoot a three. Comes up short. Yes, he had a hold of Kevin Fitznagel.
Amoroso will pick up his second foul. It's a 27-18 lead. Now, Tom is trying to do is just sell his team defensively. If they can just make a couple stops, because offensively they're playing pretty well, they just got to take away the three ball. Nichols gets it to B-line and then gets it back. There's Young. He'll shoot a three from deep in the corner. That comes up short. Scramble for the rebound out of bounds, and the Mountaineers will have a fresh 35 and the basketball. You know, one of the things the Big East is going to get used to with this with this Marquette team is, you know, Tom as Tom Cream has done a tremendous job of recruiting. I mean, you talk about Dwayne Wade, you talk about Adina, and now with the two freshmen, um, James and McNeil, he stepped up and shown he can bring some really good players in this program. Looked like an offensive foul that time, John. It was on Summers. Well, he will pick up the foul. He'll be out there for a while, but you can bet that Pitsnagel and Ganzi will be back soon. And the final is in. Connecticut defeats Georgetown. From behind, blocked by Summers, and he foul. He hit him in the head. It's going to be a foul on Summers. And what they're trying to do right now is, is put an athletic person in the middle of the zone so that he can break the defense down. He did get hit in the back of the head, and that's what James can do. He really does a great job of getting in that lane. The biggest thing is on the defensive end. They've got to be able to recognize what West, West Virginia is running. It'll be West Virginia basketball after some discussion. You saw the win by UConn over the Hoyas. The Hoyas were here and then had to play at UConn, Pacific Center in Hartford. The 87 78 was that final. Miami beats North Carolina. It's a big win for the Hurricanes. That's a huge win. I know Guillermo Diaz must have had a big game. Beeline for three. His first three point attempt, and it's good. 206 in his career. Here comes James again. Fitzgerald for three. Weak side, nice rebound. And then stripped away. Finally, Chapman goes up and lays it home. John, this is one of the things that the Marquette teams have been noted for, their offensive rebounding. Tom Crane was assistant at Michigan State for Tom Izzo, and everybody knows the way Michigan State likes the offensive rebound, and he's brought it to Marquette. Young pulls up for a jumper, comes right back into the hands of Novak. James will push it ahead. And through the hands of Fitzgerald and out of bounds. This is something, Western. You see Hair Bear right there. He just drives the gap, sucks up the defensive player, and he kicks the beeline. And this is part of what West Virginia does offensively. They, call, they drive the gaps and hope the, uh, the other defensive guy comes over to help and they find the shooters. Darius Nichols, who will be running this offense next year when Collins is gone, takes over at the point. Here's Gansey. And a nice steal by McNeil. Pear Bear will try to track him down and does. Gansey scrambling for the rebound. Nichols had it. Good job by Hair Bear that time. Great job. McNeil with a great steal. Tough shot there. I thought maybe he should have pulled it out. Stripped as he went up for a shot. Almost just a little over nine minutes to play. He jumped in the passing lane right there, came up with a really good steal, but West Virginia does a great job of getting back, and, and he has a difficult chance for the layup. Timeout. Couldn't get the... There's Pitsnago. And one. Foul is on McNeil. Kevin Pitsnago's first basket of the afternoon. And then stronger. He's shooting his jump hook. Doesn't miss too often, but it was a couple of costly misses that maybe cost him that Texas game in Kansas City in November. That's one thing the coaches were talking about yesterday. Novak not in there right now for Marquette. This is James. Three for Fitzgerald is on target. Dan Fitzgerald, the two-lane transfer with a three-pointer. And, and, and you can really see how they're really working off of James' penetration. A lot of what Marquette does is predicated off the guards getting in the lane and penetrating and pitching. Beeline, long range three, bingo. They are feeling it right now. 
That was a pretty deep three. Collins got him on the arm. That'll be the first on JD. Did it very, very well. It's a difference between knowledge and trust, and they trust their system. They don't just know it. That's one of the things Coach Thompson was talking about when he was here on Wednesday. He said, you know, I've got my system. It's similar to John Beeline's, but my kids have only seen it now for two years. He's got seniors out here been running it for four years, and that's a big difference. Pitch yeah. Noggle off the glass and good. James gets back in a hurry, doesn't he? Yes. He He's going to shoot a three and hit it. He's having a terrific first half. A dozen for him. He's a tremendous competitor. I just watched him and shoot around, and the respect the, the, uh, the upperclassmen have for him is tremendous. Somebody got a piece of that one from Gansey. He wanted a foul call, didn't get it. It was close. Here's Fitzgerald. Novak is back out there. Runs all the way across the lane. Sets up McNeil on a drive. And lost it out of bounds. Marquette will keep it. Set. We've got a game with Providence here, and then they go on the road to UCLA. Steele stolen by Bay. Patrick Beeline brings it up. Seven turnovers. Pitsnoggle off target with his three. He's not made a three-pointer yet this afternoon. James will hustle back. Lost control momentarily. And then finds Fitzgerald. He comes down the lane with a jump stop and a, and a travel. travel. He jumped, but I guess he didn't stop. <laughs> by Gansey. Beeline has a couple. Pitts Noggle works the baseline, turns it over. James again. I mean, this guy is all over the place. James lines up and drills a three. He is having a great half. He's got 15 points in the first half. He was a prolific scorer in high school. Yeah, but, but he's, he's, he's a tremendous competitor, and that's what you need out of your lead guard position. Pitts Noggle gets inside, puts up a soft jumper. Well, he's doing his damage inside this afternoon. He's turned into an inside post guy now. Well, he'll play there if he has to. Yeah. He likes to go outside and shoot. <laughs> West Virginia jumps to the 1-3-1 right now. Man, the way they spread it out on the side, it's tough to make those passes. Young got a piece of that one, knocked it out of bounds. It is. And what they try to do out of the defense is basically to extend you. And instead making your passing lanes a little longer and take away your inside game. Barrow checks into the line. Usman Barrow is in there and going to the bench is Jameel Lott. Novak has been fairly quiet so far. He's had one three pointer. Loose on the baseline, out of bounds. It'll be West Virginia basketball. John, the other thing the one-three-one does, you know, because West Virginia is basically is undersized. I mean, that they're playing, you know, with with three guards right now is again, it, it doesn't allow you to post anybody, so it takes that away from you offensively. Beeline finds Gansey. And on the rebound, a foul call. Gansey ran a nice little curl that time and was able to find. He ran a little curl, got the ball to Pitsnago, and Pitsnago thought, I think he thought he was fouled, misses a short, a short jump shot. And it was Gansey you saw going over the back, back that the picked rebound. up the foul. So a seven-point game. The lead has been as high as 12. At 11.45, the Mountaineers were red hot and had a 12-point lead. Novak for three from the corner, comes out. Off and tracked down by Collins. JD will walk it up now. Mountaineers will reset in their half court offense. Less than five and a half to play. Gansey to Pitsnagel. Gets it back. Nope, turned it over. James the other way. Two on one. James stays with it. Misses the shot. And the follow is no good. McNeil had it. Beeline battles him and comes out of there. Great hustle that time by West Virginia. Here comes Young into the lane. Beeline for three. Got it. That's his third. Ten in the first half. Ten three-pointers for West Virginia. They're back to a ten-point lead. Excellent break that time by West Virginia. And when they break, they spot up at the threes instead of going all the way to the basket. McNeil knocked away from behind. Mountaineers come out of there. 
Another three for Patrick Beeline. Rims out. And Gamzee hit the deck underneath the basket trying to get the rebound. Here's James. His short jumper good. Oh, he's smooth, isn't he? He really is. He's got a lot of confidence. He's got 17 points, too. <laughs> That'll build your confidence, John. Fitzgerald set to check back in. Hair Bear will report for West Virginia. This pace has been pretty pretty fast. Like both teams look a little windy. Pitsnoggle's three is good. You knew that was coming. He just ran a little step back. They ran him. They ran a cutoff of him, and then he stepped back to the open area and was wide open. 11 of 19. On Wednesday in the first half, the Mountaineers were 3 for 19. James has half of his team's points. They've got 34, and he's got 17 of them. And that was the first step travel. For the turnover at the Chicago and Frank Young. Dwight Burke, the freshman from Brooklyn, is on the court for the first time for Marquette. He's covering Young right now defensively. First time we've seen him this afternoon. 3.20 to play in the first half in Morgantown. Along with Perry Clark on John Sanders. Danzi's three-pointer, too strong. Rebound by Burke. Gets it to James. James taking a little more time. Here's Novak outside. Pulls up on Hair Bear, bangs it out. They haven't really been able to set no back up for wide open looks. That's a three pointer, a quick throw. Amoroso with a rebound as Hair Bear, who hit a three earlier, misses that time. Here comes James again. Down the lane. Fitzgerald for three. Oh, good hustle, staying with it. Amoroso bangs it off the glass and in. Typical Tom Crean's teams really do a good job on the offensive glass. He's been a little disappointed in this team's rebounding, and he has to be happy with that effort right there. That was he was in among some traffic and came out of there with the rebound. Young gets it low, pit snoggle. Jump hook, long one along the baseline, and he comes up short. And again, that's something they've been trying to do more of to get Burke the ball out. Changed his pivot foot that time, <laughs> looking for help. This place will do that to you a little bit. Well, which is the pivot foot? Well, let's make it this one. <laughs> nope. That's the wrong one. West Virginia ball under their own basket. 11 turnovers. With this young team, Tom has done a great job of teaching. You can see his demeanor on the sidelines. Even when they gave up some shots early, he wasn't yelling and screaming. He was coaching. Hair Bear drives inside, then misses the shot. Fitzgerald comes back the other way. Hair Bear just now getting back on defense as James shoots a three, hits the deck, and he'll go to the line. That'll be on Patrick Beeline and point in the first half. His high, his collegiate high, is 22, and he's already at 19 this afternoon. Cuts the lead back now to seven. Less than two to play. Gansey to Pitsnoggle gets it back. Here's Beeline. Inside Pitsnoggle. Collins for three. Off the mark. Loose ball tracked down by Marquette's Joe Chapman. And here's Amoroso under the basket. Back to Chapman. It's a two. He was right on the line, a two-pointer. Marquette has to be extremely pleased right now where they are to be five points down as, as well as West Virginia shot the ball in this half. Hair Bear, Novak on him, now Beeline. Beeline for three. Comes up short. Amoroso. He's played a pretty good first half. He has really the rebound. Has. He's come in and stabilized him on the glass. And James has just been dominant here in the first half. Chapman for three. Got that one. Here they come. This is the guy that Coach that Tom talked about yesterday was a key for them offensively. He stepped up and did a great job against Seton Hall. And he's come out here today and really hit him a couple of key shots. He has. Amoroso has also played well off the bench. 
It's now a two-point game, and the Mountaineers, well, a six-second difference between shot clock and game clock. They'll try to use up as much of the clock as they can. Marquette could have folded, but they didn't. Look for some sort of action with Ganzi. Here is Ganzi for three. Rattles at home. Ganzi has 20 points in the first half. Sixth three-pointer for him. James, long three at the buzzer, no good. Young Pitsnoggle, Hairbear, and Collins. McNeil, nice feed to James. He's alone on the baseline. 21 points for Dominic James. Good set play coming out of the half. And down low from behind, a foul call. Now, both of these two coaches have playbook. To Five. Got them both. So he's got 11. The senior from Martinsburg. And they're out in the high 1-3-1 one, one again. They will go to that normally after a made basket. This is McNeil. Novak's three. Comes up short. Rebound goes out of bounds and touched last by Marquette. It was Locke and Fitzgerald there, and they couldn't hang on to it. No, that time they used Novak, and they tried to screen the wing, and when he did that, he then popped to the open area, and he had a good look. He just hasn't knocked that down, but that's part of the way that they wanted to attack the 1-3-1. One, no trouble when they have the lead. Nice move by Herbert, but he can't finish. And that's a travel. Yeah. yeah. Jamil Lott couldn't get the ball out of his hands. Yeah, he, well, he got the rebound. He wanted to kick it to Fitzgerald, but Fitzgerald was filling the lane and had his back to him. Miss layup right there. Then he comes up with it. He's trying to kick it ahead, and the guy turned his back, and he just had to wind up traveling with it. J.D. Collins running the offense. We played one minute of the second half. Air Bear. Pitsnoggle passes on the three, gets around. Novak takes it down the lane. Missed the shot, hits the deck, no foul. James races back. Oh, what a great move by James. You know, James uses his body very, very well. When he gets in the lane, he's, he's able to use the glass. He knows where he is. And the key thing for young players is he keeps his head up. And he doesn't watch the ball. He keeps his eye on the basket, so he constantly knows where he is on the floor. He is having a career afternoon here in Morgantown. And a little bump foul that time by Jarrell McNeil. He will pick up his second foul. Watch the speed in the stop-and-go move here. But his head is, see how he kept his head up, so he recognized he picked up the basket very, very early and was able to complete the shot. Lead is down to three. Young, Pitsnoggle. And he got the roll, went to the left hand, got it in. That gives him 13. And again, the poise of West Virginia. They understand their offense, and they're taking advantage of Marquette's defensive breakdowns. Almost a turnover. Locke comes up there with it. Now James scrambles for it. It's knocked out of bounds on the baseline by Hair Bear. John, that's not any kind of set call. James around Hair Bear, dished it off inside and a foul. And Ryan gets both of them. He has four points and the lead is back to three again. Just over two minutes gone in the second half. Mountaineers looking for their 10th win in a row. Won the first two games of the season in the Guardians Classic. Then they lost three games in a row, including one here to LSU. And now they've strung together nine straight wins. Gansey. Excellent passing. And Young hits the three. That's his first basket of the afternoon. It's the 13th three-pointer for West Virginia. Here's James. Knocked away from behind. Ganzi with Pitsnoggle trailing. Ganzi will take the shot and go to the line. Nothing much Dan Fitzgerald could do but foul him in that situation. And again, we talk about the penetration. And... There you see him moving the ball around. Excellent movement. And again, the guys that have been playing with each other for a long time. 
but James penetrate. Missed the second. Novak the rebound, gets it to James. So 21 for Ganzi, 23 a career high for James. Here comes James again down the lane. Fitzgerald from the baseline hits the shot. And again, James' penetration sucked up the defense and was able to find the open man. Herbert looked to Ganzi, didn't go. This is Collins. And again, they're working Ganzi and Pitsnagel together because you're not going to leave Pitsnagel. So when Ganzi comes off those screens, he's wide open. And missed the lay in that time by Pitsnagel. Actually, he and Ganzi were both there. That might have messed up his timing. James dishes it off on the baseline. That's a travel. McNeil was in a hurry to get to the basket, but he forgot to put the ball on the floor. He was. He was so <laughs> wide open. He's a freshman. Five-point game, 15 turnovers for Marquette. But again, John, every scout report tells you you cannot leave Pitsnagel, you can't leave Pitsnagel. So when he screamed as he did right there, that's why the, the guys are wide open, because his man can't show the help, because they've been trained all week, don't leave Pitsnagel. It's Young with a couple of three-pointers to get it going in the second half. Pitsnagel almost had a steal. 14 three-point baskets for West Virginia. Their season high is 15 they made in that loss against LSU. Novak under pressure. Banks a three. Wow. He called it. He called it. And again, they run him along the baseline there against the 1-3-1. One, one. They try to penetrate, suck up the wing, and kick it to him in the corner. Here comes Collins down the lane. Kicks it to Young. Pitch Noggle for three. That's too strong. You could tell as soon as it left his hand yeah. that time. It was going to be off target. He had a good look, too. Squared himself up. Again, the penetration. Collins did a great job of penetrating to set that play up. Collins gets tied up with McNeil. Now Fitzgerald will shoot a three. Rebound by J.D. Collins. He says slow it up right yeah. now. They want to run some set stuff. Again, look for Pitsnagel to be a main factor as far as setting some sort of screen. Young, another three. This one misses. Amoroso hands it to James after the rebound. Five-point game. James for three. That's an air ball. He rushed that one a little bit. And the students who have filled this place up are letting him know it didn't get to the rim. Yeah, but Coach was, was, was still clapping and still pumping him up and telling him to continue to play hard. A little bump on the way in. His guy has to hug him, so it normally frees up somebody else because you can't hedge on the guy coming off the screen. And that's what they did with Ganzi early, and Marquette really did not handle that very well. They've gotten better as the game has gone on. Barrow touched that ball out of bounds on the inbounds pass, so the Mountaineers keep it. With exactly 14 minutes to go. Here's Pitsnagel. Beeline. Ganzi. Shot clock at 15. The thing about Mike Ganzi, he never stops moving. It seems like he's always in motion. There's the opener down the middle. Hair Bear. Well, they just kept running it and running they, it and running they it. They just turned it over. And again, the patience against a young team on the road, that's awful tough to defend. I'm just surprised Marquette hasn't gone with more zone. McNeil bumps Ganzi and he hits the deck of foul call. Well, Ganzi got the steal. McNeil will pick up his third foul. And send Ganzi to the line offensively. It shows some patience, executes, and comes up with the answer basket. And so far, they've been able to answer all of Marquette's runs. And what a game it has been for James. He's not in there right now, but he has been dynamite this afternoon. This is Fitzgerald against that 1 3 1. McNeil, all the way inside, puts it up and in. Nice again, drive. Again, the penetration. These freshmen are fearless. 
And keep in mind, they're missing Wesley Matthews, another outstanding freshman. He was averaging almost 10 points a game, and he's out indefinitely with a stress fracture. Yeah, when he went down, they thought he was playing the best of all of the freshmen. So, wow. you know, they hope to get him back in February. Air Bear with a drive. The tip no good. Pitznagel has the rebound and is fouled on his way up. Returned, and he's been fairly quiet. But two at the line for the nice touch of the big man, Kevin Pitznagel. Got 15 points this afternoon. Gansey leads the way with 23. James has 23. Fitzgerald gives it up in the corner. And, and, and Novak has had some, some, some pretty good looks. He just has not been on so far today. Short with a jumper from the corner. Fitzgerald gets it back and then travels. He bumped into his own teammate and turned it over. Coaches can live with that. And you see Tom again. I mean, he, he never gets down on his players. You don't see him yell at his players. He just coaches all the time. B-line inbounds to Collins. 12-24 to play. Lead back to nine. Midway through the first half, the Mountaineers had a 12-point lead. Now they'll just turn this over. They'll... Collins kicks to B-line. Puts up a three. Kept alive by Collins. Pitch noggles three. Bending, bending, good! <laughs> Just his second three-pointer, and there they go to a double-digit lead again. Again, they've always had an answer whenever Marquette makes the run. They just come back, and with the poor little veteran team, execute their half-court offense. And the turnover. Lead to Gansey. Runs it down. And scores! He may Biggest have hurt his ankle right game. now. He may have hurt his ankle. Well, he's gingerly trotting back, and now he may have to come out. They're on their feet in the Coliseum. The Mountaineers have opened up the biggest lead of the day. It's 70 to 56. We'll keep it. High points this afternoon for West Virginia. 11.30 to go. And nice pass along the baseline. And a missed the blank. The, the lay-in. That was all alone and could not finish. Pitznagel feeling the freeze right now. He's got 21. Danzy goes to the locker room and Pitznagel steps up and says, I got you. They are shooting 50%. They're 16 for 32, a season high. 16 three-pointers made here today. Again, they're trying to float Novak around against this 1-3-1 to give him some open looks. He just doesn't look real comfortable. Well, the latest run was that. This is James, and he has had a LeBron James type <laughs> afternoon. 8 of 10 shooting, 5 of 7 at the free throw line, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 23 points a career game for him. It looks like they're trying to run some sort of set play here. Beeline jumps out on James, and now the shot clock's going to become a factor. James out of control, but able to get it into the corner for a three-pointer. Again, his penetration was key as far as Marquette getting the basket. Chapman's second three-pointer. Somebody holding inside. Yeah. You know, Marquette has had a tough time all night recognizing um, this West Virginia offense. And uh, because, it's, as I said earlier, so much of it is done off of reads. Well, it's the fourth foul on Ryan Amoroso and Jim Burr having a little chat with Young and James. Frank Young they were doing and Dominic talking. James. Yeah, they were going. All of a sudden, everybody in the state wants a piece of you, and he's had to make some adjustments with that. 23 points for Pitznagel. They did before the game. They raised that Elite Eight banner. And had a Wake Forest game from the NCAA tournament, one of the best games we've ever seen. And they had a chance to beat Louisville, too. Uh, just a tremendous run. Well, it started in the Big East tournament, you know, and, and, and how they got all the way to the championship game. And so they had to come the hard way, too. They beat Providence. They beat Boston College. They beat Villanova and then lost to the Orange in the championship game of the Big East tournament. Uh, uh, but with that, they just caught the whole attention of the whole nation, and uh, it just kind of continued, and it was a tremendous story through the NCAA tournament. James into the lane. Oh, what a pass. Great pass. And Great the, pass. The He's basket special. counts and a foul on the play. On shooter, he's made 9 of 11 this year. Not that time, but there's a lot with a follow. It won't go. 
that time it does. And again, hitting the glass hard is one of the things Marquette does. And they're climbing their way back into it. And they've sliced five points off the lead. Young with it. Darius Nichols lost control going down the lane. Gamzee for three. Got it. That's another one for Gamzee. He's got 28 points. That matches his season high and just one away from the 29 that he scored in the weight game. I think the ankle's okay, John. That's a three, and that's good. So Chapman has had the answer. He's got 15 points. They have tied the Coliseum record. No, oh, that's a new Coliseum record with 17 three-pointers. Looking for 18. Got it. Man. They're playing horse. <laughs> that's exactly right. 81-66. Anything I can do, <laughs> you can do, I can do better. That's it. And it ties the school record of 18 three-pointers, and it is a new Coliseum record. This place is jam-packed, 14,000 here. Tremendous crowd. The students were here early. I mean, they were here when we got here. Yeah, they were here two and a half hours before the game. James off a great feed with a dunk and adds to his career game. He's got 25. Big East get ready for Mr. James because yep, he's for real. Beeline thought about three. Now Nichols with it. Pitsnoggle started to move against Lott and it was knocked out of bounds. And again, that's one of the things that they do with him. He He's able to, on the weak side, they either screen, and now we see James coming from the weak side on the dunk. But Pitsnoggle is able to screen on the weak side and the guard can come off of him or he can pop out. And when he pops out, he's got the whole side clear. And he's able to kind of go to work on folks. 15 on the shot clock. His beeline goes, tried to go inside to Young. And they managed to maintain control. Now, we're going to have to talk about this one, I think. Jim Burr wants to check. And the official under the basket, Carl Hess, says, I've got it right. But there's 11 on the shot clock. They did not reset. In the last two times, the ball's gone out of bounds. So it's not been a new clock. Mountaineers are going to have to hurry. Beeline. Set, squares, three-pointer, comes up short. James the rebound. He'll stop and pop a three and bury it. Wow. Yeah. He is something. Uh, he's really playing well. 28 points for him, matching the total of Mike Gamzee. And they came out here to shoot around at 8 o'clock this morning, and he had that sort of energy at 8 o'clock this morning, so he's kept it the whole game, the whole day. Backdoor play, Gamzee. 30 for him. A new career high. That, but again, West Virginia answers when they settle down and just run their offense, and I think going down the stretch, that's going to be the key. Lott will get the basket, and again, is that Gansy Gansy down? He's down. And let's see what happened to Gansy holding that foot. He heard it earlier. We'll check on him when we return. He jams that one home. 30 points, and the Mountaineers still lead the court. He got stepped yeah, on. Yeah, he got stepped on. And he yeah. is headed back to the locker room for the yeah. second time this afternoon. So we'll keep an eye on that. Big difference in turnovers here, too, Perry. 18 turnovers for Marquette. And they've not been able to make plays. Tracked down by J.D. Collins. Seven and a half to go here in Morgantown. Glad to have you along on this Saturday afternoon. I'm John Sanders with Perry Clark. And we have seen a clinic in three-point shooting by West Virginia. Pitsnoggle's going to launch another and hit a three. That's 19. That's a school record. He's got 26 points. And all I could do is shake his head. He looked over the bench and said, Coach, I was on him. I know it. Well, you said somebody else had to step it up in the second half for West Virginia, and it has been Kevin Pitsnoggle. He has been terrific. Good reverse basket there on the drive by Amoroso. But you gotta be you gotta be impressed with this Marquette team being on the road, the way West Virginia shot the threes today, and they're hanging in. Another one. That one rattles out. McNeil has the rebound. An 11 point lead. Fitzgerald finds Lott deflected by Pitsnagel. And he finally puts up a shot. And Beeline has the rebound on the weak side. Couldn't decide where to pass it, so he just shot it instead. Yeah. 19 of 37, three-point shooting for West Virginia. Again, they go back to now their patience in their half-court sets, and they've been very efficient with this all day. Air Bear thought about three, drives down the lane, blocking foul, they go to the line. 
They have some magical tape back there. Yes, <laughs> they do. Two for Joe Hairbear at the line. He's got nine points in the game. Pitznagel with 17 points in the second half. He has really come alive for West Virginia. Here's James. Penetrates. Too strong with a shot. Drew a foul. You know, they have not been able to keep. Counting down to six minutes left. Amoroso, strong to the basket, over the back, I think, is Lott. Good call, partner. <laughs> well, he was going to get that rebound one way or another, wasn't he? We talked earlier about this Marquette team going to the offensive glass. And, yeah, and again, Marquette's doing this, and Novak has been on the bench. And uh, yeah, before they get out of here, for them. And one in the second, Young misses the front end of the one and one. And the Golden Eagles will try to come back with six to play. And James, an awesome performance for that freshman this afternoon. Blocked out of bounds, no foul. Blocked, yeah. right? These are veteran officials. He's not going to fool people with, with any, unless there's some real contact. Intercepted by Herber. I think it was deflected on the way in as well. Yeah. So another turnover. 13 point lead. Biggest has been 17 this afternoon. And it does appear that every time the Golden Eagles make a run, West Virginia has some kind of an answer. They do, and, and they have a lot of poise with their offense. And that's when you come to trust in the system. They don't panic, they recognize what they need to do, and they have faith in it. Here's Hair Bear, right at the foul line. Inside, Pitsnagel. Turns his man around and lays it off the glass and good. And that's where he's gotten better in that low post. He was able to use his body and, and, and de he developed that little jump hook. He's having a pretty good day. 28 points for him, 19 in the second half. James keeps his dribble all the way to the baseline. And Marquette will keep it. And here comes Steve Novak back in the lineup. Now there's the star watch. And Pitznagel doing his damage in the second half. That game at the Hartford Civic Center in Texas. Nips Villanova by three. It's okay. tough to go out of conference this time of the year. James for three. Too strong. Rebound Young. Gets it to Gansey. Expect West Virginia now to come up every time and run some clock and run their offense. And this is where they're awful difficult because I think this is certainly one of their strengths, being able to execute their half-court offense. Young hands to Gansey. Shot clock at 15. Four and a half to play. Gansey for three. Man, his eighth three-pointer. And he is having some kind of a Saturday afternoon. Well, I, I, when they shoot like that, that was deep. And the guy was standing right there. 18-point lead. James weaves his way into the lane and is bumped by Pitznagel. That'll be the second on Kevin. I told you that magical touch. Look how deep he is. And he did it without a dribble. He just squared up and knocked it down. He's just playing with a lot of confidence. And he has had that shot working all day. And he was out of the lineup for only a minute and 14 seconds, despite the, a couple of painful limps to the locker room. That's a three, and it's good. Another one for Chapman. He's having a good afternoon himself. Marquette that is his fourth three-pointer. Yeah, Marquette has not played badly. I know. Mean, they, you know, they, they just happened to face a team that's shooting the ball. But every time they've made a run, West Virginia has, has answered. The problem right now is West Virginia is going to have a lot of patience offensively, and John Beeline's team all can pass and catch. So it's going to make it awful tough to double them. They're shooting 53%. Nothing wrong with what Marquette's doing. They're shooting 48%. Gansey gets it to Pitsnoggle. 30 for Pitsnoggle. The half-court execution is very, very good for West Virginia. Cramped up, and they're trying to calm him down a little bit over there on the sideline. And he has had one heck of an afternoon. Yeah. And the foul. Put Collins up. It helps Hair Bear be able to spot up. And they don't have to worry about ball handling duties. And he's very, very important to them because he does such a great job of handling the ball and setting the other guys up. Now, that's why he keeps playing through the injuries to the wrist and the foot. 
They are one point away from that 100 mark. The last time they scored 100 in a game was last March. Novak, three, bending off, tipped up and in. Pretty good game by Amoroso. He's got eight points, and that young sophomore has worked hard. He has, and this Marquette team has played well. I mean, they just have not had enough answers for the three-point bar uh, barrage that they've met this afternoon Those about West Virginia and what they've done. But this is a very good Marquette basketball team. Absolutely. And, yeah. Novak has not had a great game today. He'll bounce back, I'm sure, and have a, a great game against DePaul. And that's the schedule that comes up. It'll be Providence College here. Then they play at UCLA, and you see the rest of it. Mountaineers will have it back, and they're going to go to the bench. And we'll see uh, Joe Alexander coming in. Alex Ruoff will come in. And let's take another look at that schedule. We had it up there briefly. Let's go back to it. One oh one to eighty is our score. Pitznagel handles the ball. McNeil went for the steal, came up empty. It was last March, that 111-105 marathon game against Wake Forest. The last time they scored 100 in the reach. A, a lot of high hopes for him. He's a really good shooter, good athlete. I was watching him in practice yesterday. He's a freshman, and they don't have to use him much right now. McNeil with some penetration, which he does nicely. Nine points for the freshman from Chicago, 102-82. J.D. Collins still out there. He's the only starter on the court. 15 on the shot clock. This is a very impressive win for West Virginia because they're playing a Marquette team that is playing well and played well today. Before they got inside, the foul called on Burke. Well, yesterday in practice, and he didn't keep him on the floor very long, and they came out today and shot the ball very, very well. 103-82 in the final minute. When you look at their totals like this, they've made 17 free throws, 23 pointers, and 33 two-pointers. Right there, Kinsella's going to come up limping a little bit, and he'll go to the line. They were just sharp. One of two at the line. Foul on the rebound. And another foul. You know, unfortunately, 67. An air ball on number two. That's the last time West Virginia had two 30-point scorers in the same game. Gansey with 33. Pittsburgh with 30 this afternoon. 1967. Who were those guys? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> West and somebody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All the subs in the lineup for both teams in the final seconds. Blocked into the hands of Fitzgerald, and he gets the field goal. And if they will let the clock run down, a very impressive 19-point victory for West Virginia. They stay red hot. They have won 10 straight games. The Mountaineers are 4-0 in conference play. A dazzling three-point shooting display by the Mountaineers this afternoon. Great scoring. The tandem of Gansey, who had 33, eight three-pointers for him. 